a coal-fired live steam test of the Castle Steam V6 boiler in three parts. And this is part one, connecting the Stuart 5A steam engine, lighting the fire and raising steam. The pipe that's supplying the steam to the 5A is only 3 16ths of an inch in diameter, but it will be fine for this steam test. So the first thing to do is to light the fire in the boiler, and for this I'm using some charcoal soaked in white spirit. Why white spirit? Why not paraffin? Well I have plenty of white spirit because I clean my paint brushes in white spirit, so it's a good way of disposing of the old stuff. Don't worry, I'm not going to feed the boiler by hand all the time. These were just some pieces of charcoal that I dropped onto the bench. So now it's time to get serious. This is a shovel full of charcoal soaked in white spirit, complete with some small flecks of red paint. You don't have to use charcoal soaked in paraffin or white spirit. You could use pieces of wood. But either way, they need to be soaked in something that's flammable. But do not use petrol for this job. And don't use alcohol either. It's best to use paraffin or kerosene. But the white spirit that I normally use for cleaning brushes is pretty much the same. And after introducing several shovelfuls of marinated charcoal, the last shovelful that goes into the firebox needs to be lit. And the fire spreads very quickly inside the firebox. So the first thing you have to do now, apart from get rid of the shovel that's still on fire, is shut the fire hole door. The normal way of starting a fire in a model steam boiler is to use a gadget called a blower. A model steam boiler type blower, often used in small locomotives, is really an exhauster fan and it sits in the top of the chimney and it draws air through the fire, which stops the fire from blowing back through the fire hole door. This is a nice feature of the V6 boiler. It's a variable air bleed on the fire hole door, which can be very useful, but at this stage it needs to be closed. Because of the height of this boiler and the extremely long chimney, there is sufficient natural draft to draw the fire, so you don't need a blower. And it's beginning to smoke quite nicely already. I wouldn't normally open the fire hole door so early in the steam raising process, but I'm doing it so I can get rid of some bits and pieces that are found around my bandsaw in the workshop. These are just scraps of hardwood. Every little helps. And these pieces were already in a plastic tub soaked in white spirit. Normally by this time I would be speeding up the video, but I'm going to run this entire sequence in real time. That's why I'm splitting it into three episodes. The real idea of this video is to just show the steam test, but during the steam test, particularly on this first episode, I will try to explain certain aspects of how to do it and how not to do it. So now in the firebox there is a fire, there's some charcoal in there soaked in paraffin, and some bits of hardwood some of which is also soaked in paraffin. And now if I look at the chimney, there's plenty of smoke, and as we all know, there's no smoke without fire, and the boiler is already getting quite warm. Some viewers who don't watch my other videos must be thinking, why has he got a bath in the middle of the lawn? So if you really want to know about that, please watch the series called A Model Steamboat Named Edith. And the noise that you can hear, and the fact that the pressure gauge is no longer sat at zero, means that there is some steam pressure inside the boiler. So what I've just done is open the blower valve, which lets a jet of steam up the chimney to draw the fire. And now if you keep your eye on the pressure gauge, you will see what happens. You can see it moving up in real time. Don't forget, this video is not speeded up at all. I haven't put any coal on the fire yet, and the pressure gauge is showing 40 pounds per square inch. No, 50 pounds per square inch. And it's going to carry on all the way up. And there really isn't any coal in there, that's just a bit of charcoal and some bits of wood. And the pressure gauge continues to rise. It's time for the coal, and by force of habit, before moving away from the boiler to get the coal, I automatically shut the fire hole door. But in this case you don't need to, this boiler is very different to some of the boilers I've used in the past. As a general guideline rule, if your boiler is about to blow off or it's already blowing off and you want to drop the pressure, you open the fire hole door and the cold air rushing along the tubes drops the pressure. But that rule doesn't seem to apply with this boiler at all. Even with the fire hole door open and shovelfuls of coal going on the fire, and of course this is just black coal, it's not even lit, why is the pressure continuing to rise? There's something about the design of this boiler that is a little bit unusual. It's very standard, it's just a fire tube boiler, but the way that it's drafting is exceptional. 
and the fire is not really burning that brightly. And it's not as though the blower is on full, it's hardly on at all. It's just literally cracked, maybe a sixty-fourth of an inch open. As soon as I shut the fire hole door, the boiler immediately blows off, so I think it's time to run the engine. The working pressure of this boiler is 100 pounds per square inch maximum, hopefully dropping down to about 80 pounds per square inch when the engine's running. That would be the ideal. As you can see, the cylinder drain cocks are open to let the condensed water out of the cylinder. And off it goes. Don't forget this is a Stuart 5A with a two and a quarter inch diameter piston. That is a big cylinder and it uses a lot of steam. But at the moment, the pressure gauge is hardly moving. I'm turning the pressure down slightly on the tap because I don't want the engine to dance all over the bench. The purpose of this video is to show a steam test in its entirety and the only edits are where I got into the picture by accident. So that's it for my narration on part one. I'll be back with part two and part three. I'm just pumping some water into the boiler. I really wish I'd have fitted an injector. I'll be showing how to do that in a future episode. And that's it for the narration on this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Enjoy the rest of the show.